Hello everyone and welcome. This is the third video of the 3ds Max modeling series. Um, in this one I'm going to be covering chamfering edges, um, inset, and a couple other tools. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have a couple of objects laid out here. I have this little square with a circle on the inside. I have this, uh, whatever you want to call this. And I have just a plain cylinder. And all these are going to be used for different uh, things throughout the video. So we tap F4 and show the geometry. All these are kind of laid out a little bit differently than each other. So to start off with the box with the circle in it. For this, this is just displaying uh, very simple chamfering edges. Um, so for this, you got this look, it's kind of, you just got a basic kind of plain box here. You've got, say, a circle or you've got a cutout or whatever it may be. Um, all your quads are connected. All your chamfers have quads connecting and then running into the inside. Now, the reason I left this just blank as an end gun um, is for a couple of reasons. For the first one, for the main reason being um, what you do with the inside is going to determine how this looks. So I'm going to remake this um, to show the whole process right quick. Actually, better yet, I will get rid of the chamfer on the edges and then redo it from there. So we're going to grab this in edge mode, grab one and two, use the loop tool to loop around, <laughs> control backspace to delete the edges here. Now it's going to look like a big kind of bubble. It'll look kind of weird for right now, but that's okay. Uh, to fix that really quickly, we'll just grab these two polygons here. So we go to polygon mode, grab one, control, grab the other one. Loop. It's going to grab all the inside. And then scroll all the way down to the bottom to smoothing groups and assign it to its own smoothing group. So you tap two and then you untap one and it assigns it by itself. So now it has its own smoothing group and it's not connected with the other. And you can use that method for if you want to do like hard surface type modeling like you don't uh, that's not really the word for it. Hard surface isn't necessarily the word for it but basically if you're trying to really cut poly counts you can do that. Um, but most times you want to always have a chamfer on something because nothing is this sharp realistically. Um, in a game hard edges can be noticeable they can be very noticeable actually, especially if it's a larger object. Um, so it's always good to have a chamfer on it, even if it's really small, because hard edges like this just do not exist in the real world. You will never have something sharp like that. Um, even say under a microscope, there's still gonna be rough jagged edges. These rough jagged edges do not look good in a game. Um, for LODs, yes, you can get away with that for, say, your L1. Um, what I focus on, of course, would be GTA. It goes up to L4. Some games go up to L5, L6, L7, L8, etc. Um, but for GTA, for example, your LO, you are either going to want to have your chamfer on the edge. For your L1, you can, you can get away with this look. But for your LO, you need that extra detail. Um, anyways continuing back to what I was talking about so here we have our basic box square it's got a little circle cut out on the inside it is eight sides the reason I did eight is because this will convert perfectly into quads and to show you what I mean by that I will use the cut tool on vertex mode so you get a vertex mode here cut on your top modeling um, tray here. And we're going to cut vertice to vertice. You cut this vertice to that vertice. You just click and drag and it creates that line. And you click and you drag again. Now when you click and drag it's going to create a new one for you 
to get rid of that like I did you just simply right click on the mouse now what I was talking about it converts perfectly into a triangle same thing works for a 12 sided circle as well and so on and so forth it works up in fours but um, it converts perfectly into a quad so you have one side two sides three sides and four sides and this will then convert into a triangle if you take it cut it side to side you then have one two and three so it works perfectly <laughs> so to get the look that I had we're gonna go to the edge selection and we already have something previously selected so we're just gonna right click to get rid of the cut tool because that was already previously selected you see, you see it by the little icon right here you just right click and it gets what gets rid of it and then click with your left mouse button and it will deselect wherever you have selected or you can just click and drag so if you have something selected you can either click or you can click and drag anywhere that doesn't have a line in it or an edge to get rid of it now continuing on so with the edge selection you're gonna grab your edge here and we're gonna use the loop tool right here it's gonna loop around again grab all the edges and then we're going to scroll down in our little menu here to chamfer. And then we're going to always, you always want to click the settings button. You never want to use this button. You can use it, but then you have to use this and you click and drag. And it doesn't really give you the desired results if you need something a little more complex than that. So I always go to settings. And then you can kind of tinker with everything from here. Now you're going to want to maybe bring it about here because we kind of want like a sharper edge on this for this example. So we're going to pull it in some, maybe about a, even a 1.0 will be good. So you're going to bring it in and have a 1.0. We can press F4 to get rid of it and kind of look. It's got a pretty sharp edge. We can even bring it in a little bit more if we'd like, but I'm going to leave it where it is. 1.0. We're going to give it two sides here. So I press F4 again. So we've got two sides here. We can use one if we'd like for a harder edge, but then we'd have to chamfer both this edge and this edge um, if you needed that. So we're just going to go with two for right now, just a very basic shape. Um, and make sure your threshold, your smooth threshold, is pulled all the way up to 180. If you drag it down where it starts at, which I believe is 30, right there, it's going to leave some things separated from the smoothing group and we're just going to go ahead and let it smooth everything all together in one smoothing group because we're going to fix this bubbly look that it has so can't anything wrong with that so once you've got your chamfered edge however much as you want it to be and however many sides you want it to be continuing from the first video you don't really need any more than two unless it's a bigger object and it's more noticeable and for something like this check mark Get rid of it, done. And now you have this little box with this little cutout in the middle. It looks like a little bubble. Now, it can be a little weird to wrap your brain around here, um, especially if you don't have the lines on, because it literally, it literally looks like it's going from edge to edge and there's no depth to it. Now, if you do want this look, you can leave it. You know, it has a little bubbly look, that's cool. But if you want it to have that depth look, you're going to want to go to your edge. Firstly, you need to grab all four of these edges. So we can just click and drag, control, backspace, delete all of them. Go to polygon selection, click on this one polygon here, and we're going to want to use the inset tool. What the inset tool does is quite simple. You click on something, you use this, and it will inset inward or it will inset outward if if your um, object is open it can inset outwards which you don't really want to inset outwards um, it tends to kind of screw up it doesn't work properly if you do need to inset outwards you will use the extrude button pull it up a little bit then go outwards with say a bevel or something um, but we'll just be fo focusing on chamfer and inset for right now so we're going to inset some, it doesn't really matter how much, um, as long as we have enough room for our chamfered edge. So if you want to have the same amount 
that you have right here, then you want to leave enough space here and here for this. Because if you have this, say, all the way out here, the chamfer can't go past this. So you want to pull this in enough to where you have enough room. And we'll fix this little circle later, this big hole right here. It's not connected. We'll fix that later. So don't really worry about that. So I'm going to go back to your edge selection. Grab one edge here. Loop it. And then go to your camphor, chamfer, however you want to pronounce it. And then for the bottom here, I want a little bit of a sharper edge than what I have up top to really kind of dis distinguish it from the top and the bottom. So I'm going to pull this in to say a 0 0.5. So literally half of what I have up top. So I'm going to grab a 0 0.5, leave it at two um, segments. Check mark, done. Now if we come out of here, press F4. We now have some visual depth to this. And this is just a very basic use of the chamfering edges. It can allow to give depth to an object that looks bubbly. And it can also fix it um, if you need some smoothness. It can round off your edges, stuff like that. It's very basic use now. Continuing on, to fix your insides like this, if you ever have to make an object like this, or really any object in general, if your object converts perfectly into quads, when you inset, you can very simply click, drag, select all your inner edges here, and then use the weld tool. So click on the settings button for the weld and up it until it pulls it all inwards. Boom, done. Now you can either choose to do a couple different things with this. You can either leave it how it is because it's already in triangles, or if you would like to use the quad, just have it all in quads for your workflow, and you can click on every other one here and get rid of it and it still is in quads and it will still convert back out the way it was regardless of what you do it has no effect on the look of it but if you just for the sake of modeling like being able to say okay this is one two three and four this is a quad then so be it me personally i would just leave it it saves 3ds from having to convert it back over to triangles and it's a small detail that doesn't really matter now that's just kind of the basics. Continuing on with the next object here. Now this is a little more complex. Um, this is, you know, whatever it looks like a damn water bottle top nipple thing, whatever you want to call it. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, but what I've done here is I've done a couple of things. I have inset a circle and then extruded on a negative basis so it pulls it downward and then inset some more right here and then extrude it up and then made this little arch right here and then I used two segments like I was talking about over here I used one segment here made a flat edge and then to camfer the edges here to have this flat look but also still keep a little bit of a roundness to it but a very very tight edge and that's kind of the finished product it's nothing that I would ever really use it's a little it's actually a little too high poly um, mainly just being this part right here and to show you what I mean exactly by that is keep in mind how this looks right here keep in mind the look of this and then if I take this go to the front view or any view really grab this and then click control and drag mouse drag here use the scale tool and then go down to edge. Edge, con edge constraint keeps it on these edges here. And then just use that and pull them together ever so slightly. And maybe even move it down some. Well, that's not going to work the way I needed it to. Let's do this a different way. So we'll just pull them up and down and have them meet about in the middle. Just like so. So keep in mind how that other one looked. And then look at how this looks now. Yes, there's this very odd kind of look here. That's because these are not welded, which I can easily do right now if I just click drag all of them. Tap the weld tool, which I have to up the setting a little bit. There we go. Up it. 
and then boom. That just looks exactly the same as it did just a second ago. And there's less polys, which that is something that you need when it comes to GTA. So the lower the poly count, the better. Now, how I did this little thing here, I'll demonstrate with a new object. This is going to probably won't look exactly the same, but it's going to have the same kind of outcome here. So using your snaps toggle on the grid, you click the little button here. Snap toggle, pull it over two, and let it go up one for your height. It starts at 10. We'll up the sides to 12, which is what I used for this. And then we'll go to our modify tab, modifier list edit poly and then polygon on your selection we'll get rid of the snaps toggle tool here because we no longer need it so just go up and click it the polygon mode take that go to the top view here then we're going to want to inset and then going up on the inset we'll inset it some check mark now let's see now we will use the extrude tool. So we go to the extrude tool right here, click the settings box here, move it down some, just like so, then click the check, and then we're going to inset it one more time. We're going to keep, we're going to move it out over just a little bit, right about there, and use the extrude tool again to bring it up. So extrude with the settings button, and then we're going to pull it up. It's going to leave the current settings that you've had for the last one. It saves those automatically. You just revert it back to wherever you need it to be. So we're going to pull it up. We're going to pull it about, we're going to make it a little bit taller than the other one. So we're going to pull it about there. Perfect. Now using the inset tool once more, we're going to inset. And we're going to pull it out just a little bit. And then this time, instead of clicking the check to get this little look that we have right here, I'm going to actually lift on the Z and pull it up just like so. And then when you do that, your little box will go away, which it'll automatically save it from there. And then from here, we're going to X, uh, not extra, we're going to inset just once more. Get the same kind of concept. And then we're going to pull it up on the Z here. Perfect. And then we're going to inset some into the inside. Now, mind you, this is very small. It's not what we want. We're going to bring this out to about here. Perfect. And then extrude. Instead of going up, we're going to go down like we did here. Boom. Now this, of course, is not as big um, as this one. Of course, they're, they're little different in sizes, etc. But you get the same concept, the same way I did it. Now, for, let's see. So for the edges here, let's just say I want this edge, this edge, and this edge, as well as this edge, all to be the same uh, chamfer. So I'm just going to grab one of each, one edge of each loop it. So it's going to grab all of those edges here. And I'm going to chamfer it. Then in the settings, I'm going to bring it down some. Up one level. Pull this up to 180. And then to get rid of this uh, kind of odd look this has at the bottom, we're going to circle to the bottom. Go to polygon mode. Grab our bottom polygon here. Scroll down. Go to number two. Untick number one gets rid of that little look here, just sets it to its own poly group. And if this was going in game, you would honestly just delete this, especially if it was going up against the surface, because it's unneeded polys that you can get rid of easily. But to continue on, so we're now going to add, oops, got to go back to the edge select. We're now going to add a chamfer to this right here to keep it from having this bubble look that it's got going right now. So we're going to grab an edge loop it, chamfer, we're only going to do one this time, so we're going to do one right here, bring it in some, check mark, 
and now we're going to chamfer these outer edges here by themselves so once you press the check of course your edges stay selected so that makes it easy for us we can just press chamfer once more and bring this in kind of tight to about say here make two segments of it and bring it uh, about there perfect check mark it done easy peasy lemon squeezy everything is done and of course these both range in sizes but it's the same concept very simple you can make various different things using just these two tools alone the inset extrude and chamfer tool and then continuing on to the next one. This cylinder is a demonstration of how I like to model. This is a little tip uh, from me to all of you. Um, so when you're modeling, let's just say you're making a push bar, for example, and you want to put a cutout in the object um, using the Boolean tool, which I'll go over in a separate video. You make your little circle use the boolean tool you cut it that's great now the way that i can explain this to make the most sense to everyone is put it put that circle inside a quad it doesn't matter how big how long etc that circle or that quad that box is make sure it goes inside of just one box on that so for example say your box is this big on your object and we'll put it about there. Cool. When you go to cut, let me go to object or modifiers and add an edit poly modifier to this. When you go to cut your box after you boolean, it's going to leave just this outer. It's not going to have the inside. When you have to bring this all into quads and you have to cut it, using 12 sides for a circle inside of a quad when you have to cut a box will convert all back out into quads so say you want to make a cut you gotta make a cut you're gonna make one here to here and then from here to here now just visualize so you have this one edge here two edges three edges and four one two so it makes a little point there I can't do it actually I could and of course this is this isn't connected to this cylinder this just connects back out over here but you can visualize it here so you have one side two sides three sides and four now this you would cut out and upwards and that would make one two three and four so to do that visually right and just cut it straight through here boom done so you got one two three and four same thing goes for the other side you make a cut and for this one it, it gets a little tricky so when you're gonna do this one again it has to be in quads it's all gonna be in quads so you're going to cut from here to this edge here. Okay. So then that will leave this side over here. One, two, three, and four. And then when you come to this one, you're going to run into a problem. You have one, two, three, four, and five. In order to fix that, you're going to have to get rid of one of these cuts here. So it will then come out to this. So you have one, two, three, and four. But now you have this one. And this you have to keep following that same concept until you get around to the side. And eventually, you'll come back to where you were. Let me undo that right quick. You'll come back to the way you need it to be. You have a cut there. You have a cut there. Let me snag this one right here. Oops. Just delete. And we'll go ahead and delete this one too. Actually, no, we'll leave this one. And then this one will have to be cut kind of oddly, but right here. Yeah, 
actually fix this one right quick. This one actually may not have to be cut there. I didn't realize I still left this part here. So as it stands so far, we have one, one quad, two quads, three quads, four, and five. So now you have one, two, three. You can take this one, pull it down here to your center there. And you take this one and you just cut it straight down to the corner. And now it converts all back out and it should make that kind of a kind of shape. And there you have it. That's the way you want to do it whenever you have to boolean or cut a circle in two or something. You always want to try and aim for 12 sides because 12 sides will convert back out to four sided uh, polygons and make quads and those quads of course turn into triangles and then all your edges and stuff and your normals will work out just fine. If you don't do this of course and say you have 13 sides or 14 then you have to you know start cutting weird edges and you have to make other little changes throughout your model to make it work properly. 12 inside of a box has always worked for me. I can show you even an example on a model. Um, if I want to leave this scene here, I can go here. Don't save. Um, and find, say, a Weston. Or actually, maybe it's in, uh, I forget where it's at. Yeah, I have it saved right here, set in a Tahoe. It's not a Satina though, it's a Weston. I never did change the labeling. And I currently have objects selected. It prompts you with that big, loud noise. Uh, actually, this is not the Weston. This is something different. My mistake. Let me go and see if I can find it. half the shit's out on here. It's all named something weird. I have shit named like have his front shit or you know penis popper dildo or some shit like that. Something weird. Um, not quite sure though. I don't know where. Uh, it's not this one. This one's something different. Not quite sure, actually. Um, hmm. Okay, so for example, the this this one here, I can just show you what I mean. This is a uh, push bar I did for tactical potato. So this one has a cut in it. Has cutouts in the side here. Now mind you this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. This is a twelve sided circle edited into the shape it needed to be. And then it converts all back out into quads. Now for this one, I just let it run out the edges. I didn't bother trying to pull it in because of the shape it was. Now sometimes you have to do this. I did this, of course, because of the shape. You can't grab an edge here and an edge here because then the, the pinch of both these edges are too close and it creates normal issues. So instead, I let them run out to the sides here. But that gives you a good reference of how that works. Now for this one, I believe this one is more than 12, if I'm not mistaken. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No, actually it is 12. So this one here being a perfect circle, it being in a quad, you can easily fix it and convert it back out to quads. So you've got this being a quad, this being a quad, this being a quad, and this being a quad. If you just get rid of 
this right here. All these four. So now you have one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And so on and so forth. It converts out to a quad as it should. Same thing with just the simple box here. It still does the same thing. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. Easy. So that's just an example of when you when you have to cut holes into objects, um, what you should do to kind of steer clear of having any sort of normals issues as well as keeping everything in quads. Um, and mind you, this bumper or push bar, I should say, turned out literally as it looks. Um, no issues whatsoever, no normals issues. Everything came out just as it should be, as it looks on 3DS as well. But uh, I believe that about covers it. Um, of an over chamfering, kind of really easy peasy kind of tutorial on that inset extrude um, and of course showed you guys about keeping your circles when you have to cut in quads so they convert back over to triangles and so on and so forth and normals issues um, but I believe that about wraps it up for this video as always of course thank you for watching